let's get some lips on this guy or girl, doesn't matter. Um, okay, so I'm going to divide this bottom third into thirds again. So this is about like right now it's about the size of my finger. Um, and this this line right here, the uh, top third, like that that top third line is where the opening to our mouth is. The bottom part is where the bottom of our like lips are kind of going. That's kind of where that divot of our chin is, okay? If you thought about it, if you were looking at teeth, like that's where the teeth would be. Okay, so I'm gonna put this like mustache on there but then I'm gonna smooth it all out. So my goal here is to actually start to round the head, the front of the head out a little bit more by adding more clay here where I'm putting um, the mouth into. And I'm kind of keeping in mind, so kind of like, I feel like I end up sculpting in the nose as I go instead of having like a specific nose moment. Um, I go back and forth with that uh, most of the time. Um, and I'm thinking about the, um, the muscle that is on the skull. So if you guys have an opportunity, go look up um, some uh, muscle sculpt, uh, images, um, live drawing, um, or uh, anatomy books. Uh, so that way you can have a general idea about what it is that you're thinking about that's kind of under this like flesh, okay? So I'm just giving myself some like general noseness so that I can make my lips a little bit better. Cause the lip, the upper lip actually goes into the nose. It is attached to the nose and it does not go nose and then all, like, and then a space and then your mouth. Your lip actually feeds out of your nose, which might sound weird, but I swear to God it does. Which means that I will be adding more clay there um, to make sure that it really does look like it's flowing out of the nose. If you don't put more clay there and it doesn't look like it's flowing out of the nose, what you end up looking like is you end up looking like duck face. Um, you know those pictures where everybody sticks their lips out and they look ridiculous. Yeah, that. So I want to make sure that I have um, plenty of clay there, but I don't want to smooth out that bottom part because I want to maintain that uh, curve there. So I need more clay so I can actually, like, because I don't want it to be a weird divot into it. I, again, there we go. So see how it's not going in anymore? It's just coming straight down from the nose. Now, people's mouths are definitely different. Um, so if you want to sculpt something different, by all means. But if you find yourself ending up with duck lips when you didn't want duck lips, um, that is because you did not put enough clay above that upper lip to lead it into your nose. So I'm going to start to smooth that out and then try to maintain that, um, that edge that's just ever so slightly nice um, that is actually the muscle um, like rim of your lip. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to, I try to look at all of these different angles, keep them moving around, and I try to keep this in my hand instead of on the table. The more I put it down on the table, the more it's, the table's just going to push into it. I'm going to flatten out my head and my head will get oddly wide um, and it'll start to deform things and then you pick up random stuff on the back of it. And I want to just check to make sure that I'm keeping it um, even. Um, so I want my head to be deeper than it is wide. So I'm kind of working on keeping that sort of compressed. Um, I want to make sure that my brows are coming forward evenly. My cheekbones are kind of in the right spot. Um, and now, uh, so that's like looking okay. But I'm going to keep a constant eye on that one. Now I'm going to make the lower lip, okay? Um, and everybody's lips are different too. Pick out what you want. Um, I'm going to go for something that's roughly the same size, which the funny part is this is like when you look at it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so like how Mr. Potato Head works, um, which Mr. Potato Head, just like the potato stage of our process is just the first part. We have to move past that. And I do want to try to maintain that 
line, that natural line between the two lips where they don't get sealed together because it's so much harder to create that dark shadow once it's sealed together. And you can see the bottom part is starting to look a little bit duck lippy. Guess what? We're gonna add more clay down at the bottom for the chin right now. Um, so that it looks, so that I can bring that forward a little bit more. Now earlier um, I had kind of pulled that out with my hand, but that's never quite enough. Now the other thing is I want to have this like kind of wrap around the head and I'm going to start to build up like it's going to be cheeks next. Um, but while I'm at it, let's just try to get everything like kind of symmetrical. But I want to make sure that that mouth like wraps around my head and isn't stuck on the front of my head. So I'm going to be pushing those little corners back in. Um, and especially once I start to build up the cheeks, those dents that I put on either side will start to make a little bit more sense. I'm going to give myself, um, oh shoot, I totally forgot what that, it's like, it's not a cliff. I don't know. I don't remember what that little thing's called, that dent. Somebody type it in for me. I'm just gonna give my nose just a little extra clay because it's, it, I dented it a little bit. And I, cause I do wanna make sure that septum, see, I think that's a septum. I remember names of body parts. No, I don't. Um, thank goodness I'm not a medical student. But I'm going to start to work on rounding this over so it's not such a hard curve because our noses, remember when we want to sculpt soft things, it's going to have little like rounded bits. Um, all the soft things don't have hard angles, so I want to get rid of those angles. So I'm starting to curve around the nostril, and again, everybody's nostrils, everybody's nose is very different. Proportionately, we all have about the same size nose in that it's um, one third of the front of your face. But other than that, like, who knows what's going on? Like, maybe you broke it at some point in time and it's all sorts of, like, crooked. Um, maybe you have, like, a little bump on the bridge or you have a really heavy indent or it just goes really smooth. Or maybe it's, like, a little buttony sort of thing and it gets bulbous on the end. I don't know. I'm not doing, I'm just doing, like, generic head right now. So these are, like, the features that I sculpt over and over again. And this is what a generic person kind of looks like to me, I guess. Um, the other thing that I think is really interesting about nostrils is that nostrils are kind of like fingerprints. Like nobody's nostrils are the same. I, yeah, I have kind of an obsession with nostrils. It's not weird. I swear to God. Um, I just like to like, that's the thing that I notice. I don't notice like ears, but nostrils. So now I'm going to go over into the corner and I want to create the curves of the lip because right at the corner is generally where I can get a little bit more depth and shadow. Um, it's also where a lot, a lot of your like lip is kind of coming in and your lips are going to be as wide as the middle of your eyeball. And um, now I want to work a little bit on the cheeks because like I said, the sides of our um, mouth really are going to start to make a little bit more sense once we get a little bit more cheek. So just like my chin was a little bit underdeveloped before, I'm going to add just a small like chunk of clay over onto the chin and it's kind of like a triangle shape over onto the side. Um, so that just below the eyeball, right at that halfway point, that's going to be the part that actually is sticking out the furthest on your head. And then I'm going to round that over. Like, so there's a muscle that comes from the middle, the bridge of your nose down into your cheek. So that's one part of the triangle. Then there's the bottom part of the triangle, which is coming down together by where the mouth is. And you can already see how that's starting to make the mouth a little bit more um, realistic and our face have a little bit more features to it. Okay, so one side versus our um, other side that doesn't really have any 
sort of cheek yet. Now, the other thing that's happening is, so there's my, like, that middle uh, cross there is where my ear is going to go. And that's actually where my ear goes is also the back of our, um, our jaw. Okay, so I'm kind of bringing out that jaw a little bit more so that, that we're not just like a weird oval. And then we'll do the same sort of triangle over on the other side, I'm trying to get things to match again. And be careful again while you're working on this to look at the overall shape. Keep checking to make sure that you're not turning it into this sort of like really flat, um, something that's wider than it is deep, because that's not how heads work. They are deeper than they are wide. Surprisingly narrow, actually. It's kind of weird. Now I'm going to add just a little bit more clay over onto the sides. This is like the muscle and the meat and the fat that's underneath your skin. Um, it's what really starts to create a sense of fullness. Um, so initially when we started making this form, we had a blocked out like area of like some stuff needs to go here. But now we're really adding on kind of the muscle and the meat and moving things around so that it's a little bit more um, realistic. So I'm going to do two little... Um, like croissants or something, half moons. I'm gonna put that on either side. Um, and this is gonna be like kind of the muscles on the edge of my mouth, which I realize right now looks like some crazy, um, I don't know, teeth or a weird mustache, but we're gonna blend that all in. And remember, your mouth should be about as wide, should go out as far as the middle of your eyebrow. I mean, sorry, not your eyebrow, your eyeball. Um, so as long as it's going that wide, then you're doing good. And it should fade into the edges. Now, if you have a tool like this that has this nice little like tapered point, oh my gosh, it's so great for this. It's my favorite tool for this little exercise right here because it allows me to create everything like so when you're working on this you're basically making an exaggerated bit and then you're softening it and you exaggerate it and then you soften um, now you don't want to soften too much you don't want to over exaggerate so it's it's kind of a fine line where you're just kind of constantly walking it back and forth um, plus things move around as you're working on it and you're going to start to notice that they aren't even or something like that so Again, check all of your angles frequently and try not to work with it on the table too much. When you're not working on this, make sure that you cover it well and maybe even just spray it with a little bit of water. You don't want this to get hard. You want this to stay pretty soft while you're working on it. Um, if it starts, if the surface starts to get like leathery or like hard to move around like it's not easily moving um, then you need to get some more water on that maybe even take a um, terry cloth like rag not like a good one like a, a cruddy shop one um, that like has a really low like a, a 50 thread count something horrible um, where you can see light through it and then dip that in water and then wring it out completely and then put it over the top of your piece and cover it in plastic and leave it alone for um, like an hour or so. Um, and that should actually help bring it back. Don't put it onto your um, cement board. Your cement board will dry your piece out more. We just want to be careful to not, um, if it's not 
easily kind of smearing around. It just makes this entire process a lot harder. So I'm working on softening the edges of this, of my mouth now, and making sure that I maintain that kind of opening. Um, I think that the wooden knife is actually a great tool for a lot of uh, lip things. And I'm really working on keeping that kind of rounded too. And that's the thing I like about the wooden knife is that it has a little bit of a curve to it. So that works out great in terms of creating that angle. And I'm just going to have my lower lip just be a little bit smaller than my upper lip. Um, people's lips are all different. This is not a right or a wrong thing. This is just a generic um, shape of, of selected body parts. Um, so again, go, go pick what your generic is. Make you your generic. I kind of make me my generic. I'm not sure exactly who I sculpt. It probably is me. Or like a weird male version of me. I'm not sure. I'm going to go back and make that jawline again. And we'll see how even I am in terms of like kind of front and back. Smooth things out. Make sure my chin's even. I really encourage you guys to um, take some pictures of yourself from all sorts of different angles in good light. Um, so that way you can actually get a feel for how you're doing on this. I want you to make a realistic head, but your head doesn't have to be of anybody in particular. Um, and if you want to go a little fantasy on the hairstyle, by all means, do that. First I was working off screen on the bottom, now I'm working off screen on the top. I just can't ever stay right in the middle. Get those crumbs out of the inside, try to maintain my line a little bit better. And if I just push up on the lip a little bit, I can really change the lip line super easy. It's actually kind of fun. You can play around with giving yourself like super full lips or uh, super skinny ones, whatever you want. I can't overemphasize though how important it is to make sure that you are looking at some reference images. Okay, I'm just checking to make sure that my lips are like in the right angle and that they're looking relatively even from the top. Always check from as many different angles as humanly possible, guys. 
look for some level of symmetry. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's like people aren't perfect. That's like the cool thing about people um, is that they aren't fully symmetrical, but they're like pretty close. Enough that when we look at it, we like think that they're symmetrical. And then when you take those pictures and you like just double both sides of like their face and it looks super creepy um, or really good, I'm not really sure. I want to make it so that lip looks like it's coming a little bit more flowing from the nose. Your mouth and your nose are connected, guys. That upper lip is connected. I'll start to round that nose out a little bit. I'm using my um, half chisel tool, which is actually really nice on that, and that it has like a nice curved edge. I could do that with the wooden knife as well. Um, if you don't have these uh, clay shapers, don't worry, you will be okay. Your life is a little bit more difficult, but generally um, with the first time of, of us sculpting a head, um, having those finer tools don't necessarily do you a ton of good and then after you're done sculpting it and you had to make another one then you'd be like oh my god these tools are amazing but you know uh, don't worry about it uh, these clay shapers um, at Ardvark are like the set of them are like $80 um, if you get this these are what this is one of the few things that Ardvark does not have a competitive um, price on at least in comparison to Amazon pretty much everything else Ardvark is definitely the way to go but the clay shapers I can find the same set that's $80 at Amazon for um, like $30 um, on uh, on uh, Amazon did I say that right so $80 at Ardvark $30 on Amazon yeah um, but they're not always available either uh, so you know and then there's another thing called color shapers which is similar but generally I find those for relatively cheap um, again on Amazon um, but everything else I like to get from Aardvark uh, they're generally cheaper I'm just going to round that out so you can see how that's totally softened up our lips and all of that weird stuff that we had before where we pulled things back um, like that's gone. We start to see that sort of like triangle of them like muscle coming down from the nose to the corner of the cheek. Um, we see a little bit of extra like muscle or skin right along the edges of the um, lips, which isn't on everybody. I just happen to like that a little bit. I like to sculpt that. And my nose is looking okay. I just want to make sure. So now I'm going to start to like clean up some things, check all of my sides, see if things are uneven. Check your angles often. I can't say it enough, guys. If you aren't constantly looking at your head from all sorts of different angles, you're gonna end up with some funky heads, guys. So that's the jawline that I'm working on right now making sure that that's even on both sides. And then when I set this down, we'll see if my, let's check and make sure my nose is looking good. So we'll do some, maybe some finishing touches on that nose before we move forward to some eyeballs. Maybe make it a little bit rounder, a little buttony. Make sure that my nostrils are um, soft. Um, they look a little bit uneven right over on the side here. So I think I might want to add just a little bit of clay so that it's coming into that like left nostril um, a little bit better. And it's just such small adjustments that can make such a huge difference. That's just to like bring that nose up a little bit to match the other side. 
little bit better. This nose has come a long way from where we were at Squidward at the beginning. I'm just trying to get rid of the edges. There shouldn't be any hard edges on this. Um, our nose is all very soft and relatively squishy. Relatively even. Not, nothing too far off. It all seems to be within very acceptable variations. Maybe bring that cheekbone up a little bit to match the other one. Yeah. Check it from this angle. It's really helpful, guys, to work upside down. I strongly recommend it. You can see how much things change, especially in terms of the shadow and stuff that I have going on. So it's, yeah, definitely work upside down. Now I want to start to, like, let's get rid of some of these. I don't need any of these lines. Um, up on the top anymore. Um, I am going to check to make sure that it's not, I want it to be longer than it is wide. And I want this top bit to be like nice and round. So I want this to be, so remember my, the front of my face um, to like kind of the hairline um, should be about the same weight as the, my brow to the back of my head. Um, so I, especially when I set it down on the table, I start to flatten it out quite a bit. So it's important that I go back and like straighten it. All right, let's really get rid of that line. I, if I don't like really scratch it out, that line is just going to haunt me. And I try to keep the same. It's really helpful when you're working with both hands so that you're getting that, um, you can kind of get a uniform-ish like sides. Um, I want to add a little bit more muscle to the side of that nose so it's not just straight back into the face. It should, it, your nut, your nose is connected with muscle um, and it's coming off the side of your nostrils, okay? Like the bridge of your nose. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. I'm getting my little eyeballs ready. Uh, eyes are next.